We keep on talking about protein shakes, protein supplements and protein in our diet. We take protein from outside but do we also have a mechanism of producing these proteins inside our body, inside our cells? And if so, then which cell organelle is helping us in doing so? Exactly, ribosomes. So today we are going to talk about ribosomes and see what their location, structure and function is. So let's dive into today's topic. Ribosomes are naked ribonucleoprotein particles or RNPs that are present in all eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The ribosomes were first discovered by Robinson and Brown in 1953 in animal cells and by Pallid in 1955 in plant cells. Okay. So where are these ribosomes found? They are found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, although in prokaryotic cells their structure varies from that in the eukaryotic cell. Ribosomes are also present inside chloroplast and mitochondria like cell organelles. Now inside the prokaryotic cell, the ribosomes float like granules in the cytoplasm. In the eukaryotic cells, the ribosomes are not only present in the cytoplasm floating like granules but they are also attached to other cell organelles. For example, you, we find ribosomes attached to endoplasmic reticulum membranes forming rough endoplasmic reticulum. We can also find ribosomes attached to the surface of the nuclear membrane. The ribosomes consist of two subunits, the larger subunit and the smaller subunit. Usually the larger and the smaller subunit do not remain attached to each other but during the process of protein synthesis they come together and attach in the presence of messenger RNA and also in the presence of magnesium ions. In prokaryotes the larger subunit has a sedimentation coefficient of 50s where s is equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 13 seconds and the same large unit in eukaryotic cells has a sedimentation coefficient of 60s. The smaller subunit in case of the prokaryotic cells have a sedimentation coefficient of 30s whereas that in case of the eukaryotic cells have a co sedimentation coefficient of 40x. So when the larger and the smaller subunits join together in prokaryotes, the entire structure sediments at 70s and in case of eukaryotic ribosome, it sediments at 80s. Now you have to understand this that we do not get this value 78s and 80s by adding up 50 and 30 or 60 and 40. When we have the two subunits separately, large and small, they have different sedimentation coefficient, meaning that, that when you try to separate them by centrifugation, they sediment at different rates of rotation, which means that one is slightly higher, heavier than the other. One has slightly more mass than the other. So the larger subunits only sediment at 50s and 60s, for prokaryotes and eukaryotes respectively. The smaller subunits separately sediment at uh, uh, 40, uh, 30s and 40s uh, uh, in case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes respectively. But when you join the two subunits together, in prokaryotes the entire two subunits taken together sediment at 70s and in case of eukaryote it, seven, it uh, sediments at 80s. In case of mitochondria and chloroplast also we find that the sedimentation coefficient for the ribosomes present in these cell orga organelles is also uh, 70s like we find in case of prokaryotes. Now what are these subunits made up of? These subunits are made up of RNA which is called ribosomal RNA. Now this ribosomal RNA not only forms the structure of the ribosome but it also has enzymatic or catalytic action. So apart from proteins, these RNAs can also act as enzymes and carry out reactions like catalysts. Apart from RNA, there are also proteins present in the ribosomal subunits. Now these ribosomal subunits 
together form a granular structure and as you can understand here there is no concept of getting surrounded by a membrane because this is a naked structure made up of only proteins and RNA. The larger subunit has three three dimensional cavities present in it. These are known as A site, P site and E site. The A site is like a tunnel which is known as the amino acyl site. This is the region where the transfer RNA will enter with the respective amino acid when the messenger RNA opens the genetic code. The peptidal site is the tunnel like structure which is responsible for carrying out the catalytic reaction during the formation of peptide bond between the two amino acids. And the exit site is where the transfer RNA proceeds to before it goes out of the ribosome after donating the amino acid. These three regions together give ribosome its protein synthesizing capacity. Ribosomes sometimes occur singly, individually or sometimes they may be found in the form of a chain like structure. Now how does that happen? When the same messenger RNA is being translated several times by a number of ribosomes to form large copies of the same protein, then in that messenger RNA we find ribosomes attached in different regions. Now it looks like a beaded string and that is known as a polysome or a polyribosome. The ribosomes are regarded as the protein synthesizing machinery of the cell. They are responsible for synthesizing proteins by reading the genetic code that is present in the messenger RNA. That was all about ribosomes. Can you find out in which kind of cell we find polyribosomes? And why do we find polyribosomes in that kind of cell? I wait for your answers eagerly, so do write your answers in the comment section below. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do hit the like button and share it with your friends if you did. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notifications bell. Do check out the full courses on our website and Android app Manocha Academy. Links are all given below. So let's stay connected together and let's keep learning. All of us hear about protein shakes, protein supplements and protein in our diet. So you are taking protein from the environment. But do you have a mechanism of producing these proteins inside your body? If so, which cell organ Lee is helping you to do that? Today we are going to talk about... I know you will talk, that is why I stopped.